Lee, uh, welcome to Hemel Hempstead. You signed today as the first team manager. Well, How delighted are you to be here? Well, really delighted. I mean, it's um, fantastic. It's my hometown club. Um, it, it means it means everything to me. You know, uh, to manage a hometown club is it, fantastic. And you know, I might not be managing for such a long time, but it's always what I wanted to do. You know, as part of this manage management journey, if you like. Um, yeah, over the moon, chuffed to bits to be. Um, Hemel, really am, you know, brilliant. You had uh, some success at, at Burko yeah. last year. If if we, I know the season was um, was cut short and those results technically don't stand, but uh, you still finished top of the table. Yeah, um, fantastic club. Loved my time there. Um, <laughs> everything runs its course, I suppose, in that way. Um, probably just felt we'd done what we could there um, with the resources we had. Um and, yeah, it just felt like it was the right time to really come away, let someone else have a go and take up where we left off, me and Steve. Um, but, yeah, fantastic football club, loved me time, and uh, we can feel proud of what we did there, you know. It was, a, yeah, it was a great couple of years for me, particularly. Brilliant, loved it. And to be managing at, at this level must be a great personal achievement, but also you must be raring to go. Yeah, yeah, really raring to go, and especially because we've had so long out now. Um, yeah, really raring to go. I mean, uh, you're just stepping up. It's the same same things as what you're doing before, but you're stepping up in terms of players and quality and what you can tap into in, ter like, in terms of um, help from other clubs and help from other managers and people I know in football. So, yeah, I can't wait to get started. And in terms of staff, you, you bring along Steve Bateman, who's yeah. a, a well-known uh, friend of yours and, yeah. and you've been at Burko with. You're also bringing in Fred, who yeah. is, a, is a character. I've, yeah. uh, I've, I've caught up with Fred. They make me look a million dollars, don't they, <laughs> the two of them? <laughs> no, they um, are ah, just fantastic to, to be with. I mean, Steve, to be honest, I, I didn't know... Uh, I mean, I knew of Steve before I jo joined with him with Burko, um, but I didn't know him personally. I took, and I took a bit of a, a punt, really, when I left um, Bovingdon to go with Steve. Um, but it was just... I got a good feeling with him when I used to meet up with him for a couple of drinks and things like that. And... Yeah, we get on great um, and we trust each other. You know, we are, we are different um, and that's probably why it's worked so far. We are different people, but we get on great. Um, and yeah, trust is the most important thing. And I don't think we've ever had a situation where, well, we haven't had a situation where I've said one thing to a player and he's gone and said something completely different. And we, we don't talk to each other about it. We don't have conversation. We're going to say this, we're going to say that. We are, it works for me and Steve, and you know, there's no reason why it shouldn't continue to work. You know, it should be good. And you've, uh, you've appointed a strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, yeah, Scott, very lucky to get Scott, to be fair. Um, he's he been at QPR, uh, he's been at Oxford United, first team. He's moved to the area, um, and he still wants to keep involved in football, so he's, he's fantastic for us to get in. I mean, he can read all the we got all the, the, the vests and stuff like that, and he can read all the figures. Me and Steve could blag it and make out, we know, but he, it was either him doing it or Fred, so it's much better that, um, it's much better that Scott's doing it. And yeah, he's fantastic to have him on board. Um, and probably he's going to teach us a few things in terms of fitness and you know, in terms of what I like to do pre-season. He'd probably be tutting at me all the time, so it'd be good to get someone a little bit more professional in. And Scott's fantastic, great lad as well. And how, is it, how important is it to retain some of those staff um, that were here last season, like the likes of Kingy and Dimmy. Well, massive, massive. You know, it, um, it, and it also takes a lot of pressure off because you, you, they're good people, good characters. I mean, Kingy supports the club, um, but it takes his job really seriously. And, you know, it, it's such an... When people say the kit man at a club, it is so important to have a good kit man. Because um, it's not just what Kingy does a kit man, it's everything. And it, it is so important because... It, the, the lads buzz of it, you know, and if you get a good kit, man, you get a good changing room, it, it's great. So Kingy, yeah, fantastic to keep. And Dimmy, well, Dimmy's probably, if not the best goalkeeping coach at this level, if not higher, if not higher above that, you know, and he's a, and he's a real good lad, Dimmy. You know, I've, I've enjoyed the chats with him and all that. It's been brilliant so far, but yeah, fantastic. The, the girls, the physios, brilliant. Um, and as I said, adding Fred to that, who... Fred, I've had now, I met him at Bovenden and he's come through with me with Bovenden and he's just another right-hand man. So having Fred in the mix with what we've kept in there, 
I mean, there, there ain't going to be a person Emma that won't love Fred. He's just, he's just infectious. And I think, <laughs> to be fair, I don't think Burko were too worried about losing me and Steve, but they was absolutely gutted about losing Fred. So it shows how, how good Fred is and how important. And uh, it's lovely to take him with us as well. You know, brilliant. And uh, in terms of players, the club has been able to retain some of those senior pros yeah. um, in the likes of Luke Howe, Jake Howes. Uh, you know, how important was that for you that, that Dave was able to do that? Yeah, massively, because, you know, it's, it's all well and good to keep bringing in new players and stuff like that, but you've got to sell yourself to the old players, if you like, of last year, and you've got to come across well, and you've got to, you know, it, it looks better as well that you've managed to keep some that, that, that are, are very senior players and played in the Football League and stuff like that, and they've bought into what you're saying to them. Uh, it just looks good, and they're still the right ages, and there's still a lot more to come from them, and... What I love from the pair of them especially, you know, was their hunger. And they, they, they looked you in the eyes and they really wanted to do well at this football club. And it's great, you know. Lads like that, it's invaluable. You can't just do it all on youngsters or younger ones that we're trying to do. We do need some older heads. And them two in particular, you know, wonderful signings over the moon for it. And you talk about it being your hometown club, obviously. You don't yeah. live too far from the ground. You, no. You'll be in and out of the town. How, how important is that for clubs going forward? Because... The COVID-19 situation has impacted clubs financially um, and we're seeing a lot more clubs go local. Yep. Um, but not just that. How important is that for you as a, as a local person, in fact, just to man manage in your hometown club? Uh, it, it, honestly, I can't, I can't tell you how, how important it is to me. I mean, I've known... Probably, I've, I'm not from, I wasn't born in Hemel. I'm not f like from Hemel, if you like, as a kid. I probably moved there when I was 11, 12, something like that. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I've loved this town, you know, and um, to manage to manage the town as well, walking around here, I come here and I, I see people I know in the bar, um, there'd be people in the crowd that I know, there'd probably be more people now because, you know, a lot of lads are going to come and watch. Um, yeah, being my hometown club, it, it means everything, you know, and as I've always said, people that know me, there's, if it wasn't QPR, it was my team, Hemel's my team other than that, you know, so... Yeah, it means everything. I couldn't, you know, describe to people how proud I am to be first team manager at Hemel. You know, it means it just means everything. And, and Dave, Dave knows that he's been brilliant, and he knows how badly I want to do well for this club, the town, the community, because um, I live here. You know, and it, 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 I want to walk down the street and people to say, yeah, you're doing well there. And it, it, I live, I live here, so it's 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 everything to me. So yeah, want to do well here. And Dave has, has been around these parts for, for many, many years. Yeah. Um, he must be someone that you, you've known locally. Yeah. Um, how important was he in terms of, well, I suppose he didn't necessarily need to sell the club to you, but how much of a draw was he? He's just, uh, listen, we'll probably record this and come back in a year's time, I'll probably think something different, but <laughs> he's a bit of a legend, Dave. He's like, um, hey, he's just, to him, all, uh, well, probably, so as, as I said, I was 11, 12, when I come here. Straight away, I knew who Dave Boggins was, you know, and you do. If you're involved in football, he's just that that figure that everyone knows. And um, so I've known him ever since then. What's that? So I said 11, 12 years. I've probably known him 15 years now. And I, <laughs> 30, 30 years. Right? <laughs> he, um, but no, so far, I mean, he, he's just he's just a character. And um, yeah, to finally to work for him and then be my chairman, yeah, I couldn't be happier. You know, there ain't. There ain't many other people that you'd want to work with like Dave. And he, he, he is Mr. Hemel, not just Mr. Hemel Football Club, he is Mr. Hemel Football, you know, and he's, he's just always been there, you know. He'd, uh, every cup final as kids growing up, he'd play here, he'd give out awards, he'd just, uh, you know, it, it, it's fantastic to be a manager for Dave, yeah. Brilliant so far. And uh, being the shrewd businessman that he is, he always sees a business opportunity. <laughs> Um, but a positive business opportunity for the club and one that's, that's probably needed in terms of the investment in the pitch. Um, we, we, we've gone through, G, and as we stand here today, it's yeah, not, yeah. Not, a, well, <laughs> not a blade of grass or any Astro laid down yet. But how important is that not only for you as a, as a manager in terms of having a regular playing surface, but also the community in terms of making it a community hub? I don't... I, I, listen... I've come from, obviously, a, a, a team with Burko that had similar situations in one pitch. Um, and as much as you want the will in the world to have all these teams and all these 
you know, t teams playing for your badge and all that lot, it's not very nice if they never get to play at the, on the home pitch, you know. It, it's just, it feels like it's not part of the club. So by having a 3G, we can actually become a community club and we can actually get kids down there and we can actually get teams on there because it's difficult. I've, I've been the first team manager where you end up copping the ump with the amount of teams being played on the pitch because the surface goes down there. and you do, you don't want to, you, you try and go, oh, I'm going to be okay with it, but you do, you get the ump with it. Um, and a 3G pitch, it's, it's the way forward. It, it, if you've got room to have several pitches, then yeah, maybe you can have the grass pitch, but for what we want to do and for the community side, so yeah, I'm over the moon with getting a 3G pitch. Yeah, and it means during the winter months, August is great because the pitches look lovely, look like a million dollars with it and you think, oh, do you really want to rip that up to, to go 3G? But I think people forget during the winter months, you'll be beneficial to having a 3G pitch. And also, you know, you're getting a game here on a Saturday, you know, and, and people will come and, and watch because they know we're playing here regularly on Saturday. And the 3G pitches have come a long way. I know there's a bit tarnished with, I, I mean, I grew up supporting QPR and we had a 3G pitch. Well, I don't know what, what 3G it was. It was 1G or whatever that was, Ranger. <laughs> don't even think it was a G. It was, but... It's come a long way, you know, and the, these pitches are really good now. So, yeah, it it does mean you've got to build a different team, if you like, a different squad of players that you would have done if it's a grass, or especially a, a muddy grass um, pitch to play on. And you have got to build a different squad. You've got to build a squad to be able to play on 3G. So, in this league, what's it look like? Six or seven teams now 3G. That'll work out, what, every two out of three weeks, something like that that we'll be playing on 3G pitches. So it, it can only be a good thing for us to have a 3G pitch. And you talk about um, building a squad and two players yeah. that you know very well and JJ and Matty Bateman. How good is it to uh, to see them here and, and have them here playing for you? Massively. You know, I, I just, I, I know how well they're going to do. I know how good players they are. Um, and they're local lads as well. So the two of them was not without plenty of offers to go and play elsewhere. Um, and... Financially, you know, they probably wouldn't want me to tell them, but I will. You know, financially, they haven't signed for Hemel Football Club because of the, the money side of things. They've signed to be part of this football club um, and they know what it means. You know, Matty's in the same boat as me. He, he's grown up playing all his football at Hemel, uh, in the Hemel area. And it's funny, we talked about it two years ago when he was at Burko, you know, let's try and get you in at Hemel and try and play regular. It, it didn't know that it'd be me, the manager that gets him here. But yeah, I, I think the, the fans are going to be delighted with him too. You know, JJ, JJ's as good as a raw player I've seen in a long time that hasn't come. You know, the beauty with JJ maybe he hasn't come through an academy system. Um, he's learnt his trade playing men's football all the time. So yeah, he's only 21 still, but he's got a hell of a lot of senior games underneath him. Um, and the pair of them, a pair of them are a great, a great foil for each other. They work together well, and yeah, getting the two of them in, brilliant, fantastic, you know. And, and they're the right, they're the right lads at, at, at the right time, and yeah, going to be, you know, the fans should be happy seeing them play. You know. And you talk about a little bit about them signing for the right reasons. Is that very much your philosophy? If yeah. you know players need to come here for the right reasons and not necessarily what they pick up each week. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, listen, listen, Dave's. Dave's pubs and everything's it. It's, it's took a hit, you know. So what we've got is what we've got um, to work with. Uh, <laughs> it allows you to get players for the right reasons, you know. You you haven't got to juggle things about. If you haven't got certain things, then you can't give it to them. So the lads that are playing for this football club and wear the red shirt next year will be playing here for the right reasons. There's no two ways about it. The, they, they've got to perform to certain things we ask of them. Um, but one of them will be, yeah, they're here to do well for Hemel Football Club, not for financial gains just yet. It will be to do well for us. And uh, we, we still don't know when the, when the season will start, but is, uh, is, is pre-season upon us and yeah. some fixtures in the diary? Yeah, yeah, we've got them in. Um, again, probably like most clubs, you can only pencil games in because we don't know. Um, I'm not, I'm not one of them that likes to get back pre-season 10 weeks before. Listen, it's, it's horses for courses. I don't knock any manager that does or anyone that, that wants to. For me, 
I like doing things six weeks before the start of the season. Now, we're sort of guessing when that is. Um, also, I've only got six weeks worth of coaching or six weeks worth of sessions that I know. <laughs> the other two would be bluffing it anyway. So it's, yeah, we're going back six weeks before. So it should be approximately a week Saturday. That's when we're looking to get the boys back in. Um, it's different to the old days where maybe my generation, the generation before, where if you had that time off, you'd blow, you'd, you'd blow up and you get big and fat and stuff like that. The boys now, to be fair to them, it's Instagram, there's too many photos knocking about, so they all make sure they look well and they're in good shape. So that's, you don't have to worry about that so much. Boys are fit. Um, and to be fair, if you're not going to get fit in lockdown, what we've had, then you're never going to be fit, you know. So that side of things, we're not to worry about, but it's, it's just getting the right time to get them in so that come the start of the season, they're still interested, you know, in, in doing a pre-season and not just bored stiff with it. So we've tried to plan it to get them back in the right time. And lastly, uh, if there's any, any fans or any local people that might be swaying more towards non-league with the, with the current situation, what would your sort of last message be to those people to, about coming down here? Well, look, it's, it's, hopefully it's going to be great. I mean, my teams, as well as Steve with it, we, we do score a lot of goals. You know, we, we do, it's the way we play. Um, I can't see it being any reason why it's going to change at Hemel. Uh, we play a certain way that, that does allow us to score goals. Um, so that side of things is great. You'll have a group of lads there that are a little local, a little bit more local, you know, than previous. Now, that's not a, any way a slight on the, the last thing. It's just the situation we're in now, we have to go a little bit more local. Um, so like Matty, JJ, Jake, Luke, they're, they're all more local lads that we're bringing into the club. Um, which is what I want to do as well, because if I'm local, then they want to be local as well. So it, there's that for them. But also, you know, and in fairness to Dave, he's took a right punt, really, in going uh, £10 next year for admission prices and, what's it, Fiverr as well with concessions. I, I don't know any other club that's done that yet. You know, um, they, he didn't have to. He's just trying to give something back to the community. He's building a new stand to try and get this place you know, bigger capacity. So that side of things, they want to get the play, place really rocking next year and, uh, you know, it'll be a good place to come and watch football. Now, we we'll wish you the very best of luck going forward. I'm sure we'll have many more of these interviews <laughs> and, and hopefully uh, we'll be uh, on the winning end of, of a lot of them. Cheers, Dan. Top man.